Disasters on the underground are mercifully rare. The prospect of an accident underground is a frightening one. The darkness and the confined space adds an extra dimension of terror to an already nightmarish situation. Today's video is not about a disaster, but an event that so nearly was. The stage for our tale is Borough, or rather a point just to the south of Borough. Borough is one of the oldest stations on the Northern Line. It's located on Borough High Street, just south of the Thames, and was built by the City and South London Railway in 1890. The City and South London was the first electric underground railway, and it was the first deep-level tube. Digging tunnels through the clay soil of London is no easy feat, and it wasn't until the invention of the tunnelling shield that it was really a practical proposition. Mark Isambard Brunel invented the first one for his tunnel under the Thames, which is now the part of the overground between Rotherhithe and Wapping. James Henry Greathead, whose statue can be seen outside Bank Station, improved on this with a circular version. His shield was used to dig the city in South London Railway. The process was this. The shield was driven forward through the soil by means of screws. As the shield moved forward, in sections, the workmen dug the soil out and reinforced the tunnel with cast iron rings. I won't claim digging tunnels was easy, but it was easier. South of the river, the soil becomes wetter, more gravelly and less stable, which is why so few tube lines dare to brave it. Still, the city in South London did. In 1913, the city in South London was taken over by Underground Electric Railways of London, and in 1921 the government agreed to finance a project to combine it with the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway, another of UERL's lines. To make the two lines compatible, the city and South London tunnels would need to be widened. The city and South etc. was built with tunnels of 10 feet 2 inches diameter, as compared to the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead's 11 feet 9 inches. The process of widening was actually pretty simple. Tube tunnels were, as I say, reinforced with cast iron rings. The process of widening consisted of taking out a ring, digging the soil out to the new diameter, then putting the ring back in with plugs to fill the extra space. It sounds basic, but it worked, and even allowed them to keep the line open during works. The job proceeded rapidly, and as the end of 1923 drew near, it looked like they were right on schedule. Until an accident happened. On the 27th of November that year, a rush hour train just south of Borough hit something. The driver stopped the train and got out to investigate. He found a broken board on the track in front of the train. That would need to be attended to, and he would tell them at the station. As he climbed back into the cab, he heard a warning shout from the guard. The tunnel was flooding. Acting quickly, the driver took the train into Borough Station, and just in time... 650 tonnes of gravel came roaring in through a gap in the wall, completely filling the tunnel. Less than an hour later, a gas main exploded, creating a massive crater beneath the already undermined Newington Causeway. A fractured water main fortunately put out the fire before any more damage could be done. There were no deaths or injuries on the train, apart from possibly one guard with wet feet. On alighting from the train, passengers noted that the train was spattered with gravel from front to back, an indication of how close a call it had been. Incredibly... Nor were there any injuries to those in the street above, though a few pedestrians had to think fast and a couple of trams had to make an emergency stop upon seeing the rails bent up in front of them. What had happened was this. A ring was out for excavation, and to protect the tunnel, wooden boards had been put in place. Normally, this was sufficient. But remember, the soil south of the river is less stable. Of course, the engineers were aware of this, but they weren't aware of just how close the tunnel came to a huge deposit of gravel up above. Contemporary reports described it as an underground running river of sand. It was so close that when a board came loose, the train hitting it was enough to destabilise the mere inches of clay up above. Hence, the collapse. Naturally, this is the kind of unforeseen circumstance that can really put a crimp in your plans, and so it was decided that maybe keeping the line open 
wasn't such a good idea. The line was closed and the section south of Moorgate, including the section of tunnel in question, was reopened on the 1st of December 1924. Barra Station itself was rebuilt, which was actually unrelated to the accident, and reopened in February 1925. It was a combination of luck and speedy actions that saved the day. Had the guard not spotted the water, had the driver not been quick enough off the mark, had the traction current cut out before the train could get to the station, we might now be talking about one of the worst disasters ever to befall the tube. As it stands, the collapse of the tunnel in Borough is just a footnote in the history of the London Underground. Well, I hope you enjoyed this remarkably lucky tale from the tube. If you did, please click like and consider subscribing for more. This video was originally going to be a general history of Borough Tube Station, but I was kind of amazed by the fact that no one really talked much about this incident. So I got sidetracked the way I so often do. And there will probably also be a video about Borough Station itself in the not too distant future, therefore. Anyway, thanks as always to my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are the cast iron reinforcement to my gravelly soil. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the tube.